Good morning or afternoon or evening, everyone. One of those. It's Saturday or Sunday. I know Ben is here, so it's Sunday for him. <laughs> I just always like to make that comment every every Saturday, Sunday. <clears throat> you guys were chatting away while we were well, we were waiting for this to start. Yes. I guess John was first here. <laughs> we had Kathy. Donna, my mom, and then Mag said hi. <laughs> and then obviously we were, was asked, was it blueberry pie or M&Ms today, Mags? And I got a delivery of Reese cups last night. So Ooh. it's Reese cups. I had a Reese cup to get my day started. Um, we have Janine, Betsy, Thomas. Benjamin mm -hmm. and Stephen, Chris. Did I miss? I think something just no. I think I got everybody. I think I got yeah. Lynette. And anybody else that's watching yeah. later, we say hi to you. Yeah. Good morning. We usually have a few. We don't have as many people watching today than we usually do. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful fall-ish feeling morning here for sure. So it was people like are out. It was actually not as hot yesterday as it has been. So I looked out a window this morning and there's this big tree that's one of the first trees to change. And I noticed this morning, and I don't know why I haven't noticed before, it's just bright yellow. And I'm like, oh no, it's the trees are changing. So yeah. That time of autumn, year. autumn is coming. Instead of winter is coming. Autumn is coming. Yeah, autumn is coming. <laughs> Fall is here. I, oh, I don't know if you wanted to go ahead and do this now, but we wanted to to tell everybody that uh, we're acknowledging the date today that it's 9-11, which is September the 11th, which is mm -hmm. the anniversary of the uh, planes flying into the World Trade Center. And I think Sarah had just real quickly checked to see um, if there was some commemorative thing that you could do today on 9-11. So we do have a 9-11 project on Wikitree and we have started to, you know, you have a category and all that so you can um, work on if you feel you wanna help improve these profiles or add some. So we have a 9-11 project. We also have a page about the planes and you know, they've, it was actually Jillian Thomas um, she worked on this page. Um, and then we also, like I said, the category. So if you wanted to look at these today and um, work on them or just read through them, browse through them, um, we have all that. You do. So just to acknowledge today, Remembrance Day, September 11th. So. But you know what else is going on today, Sarah? What else is going on today? We have the question of the week. Oh my gosh. What is the question of the I, question I think it's of kind the of week. a cool question of the week this week. It is. Have you found any diaries from your ancestors? Lots and lots and lots of great answers and great responses to some of the answers by one of our favorite wiki treers who may or may not be here. Um have you found it? We'll start on wiki, uh we'll start on Facebook and uh we'll see that uh June Stern says, June Stern's Bootka, many letters from father-in-law to his wife-to-be. And one of the, the, the things that was pointed out by Pep Shepard in our G to G post was, even if you don't have technically diaries or journals, those letters, those postcards that you have, those are almost like and it just as good as uh, journals and diaries so if you have many letters from your father-in-law to his wife to be june that's a good thing um my great grandmother my great aunt and her husband i have those i've also got a letter from a 15 year old great grandfather great great grandfather to a 14 year old great great grandmother i hope that they weren't married then uh, and another five years later from him, her to him a month before they were married. Oh, cool. So they didn't get married until then. Matthew. Okay, cool. 
David Hoff. A lot of people were posting links to pages, and I'm going to show some of those in a minute. David Hoff, Hoff has a really great one from his uh, great, great, great grandmother, Sarah Jane Wolf. Hoff's brother, great uncle, Lambert B. Wolf, extracts from his diaries a soldier in the first U.S. Cavalry in 1856, which is pretty cool. Philip Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. They're already bound. Uh, wow. Many diaries from his great grandfather. That's just such a blessing to have so many great things. Joan Tester. I have a letter from my grandmother. Um, no, but letter with dates on the back, which is good info. Yeah, Kim. Uh, Brian Morris, Mark Stallworth. Not really diaries, but my fourth great grandfather was a newspaper editor and would publish some ramblings and even letters from his relatives in the paper. That is a uh, real jewel to have. Paul Ballard. I have a series of postcards sent by a young soldier to his mother in the months before his death in World War I. Uh, three generations of journals from my paternal line from Travis Henderson, Mary Reed from her mom, grandfather, and father. Connie Leonard Volkman, not mine, but my husband's family. That's great. Uh, Jeanette Lundell, um, yes, my grandmother's six volumes, but most of the entries are just a few sentences about everyday things. You know, one of the things that the Puritans had to do, I was reading this yesterday in Albion Seed by David Fisher, is they were they were required to keep journals, even if it's just a matter of a daily catalog of what they need, needed to do. Spent one uh, one cent on a glass of milk or whatever. Um, and Denise Hunt, uh, Denise, if you're related to me, I would love to know about Grandma's diaries. Uh, she never wrote anything subjective, just her daily chores, etc. But I've carried on her tradition. I started in 1982 and have left more detail, but with a view of who will read them after I die. So Denise Hunt, that's really cool. Picking up that. Um, that tradition from your your mom. So here we go into our G to G feed. Now Pip Pip must have a special building added onto his house to house all of this. He's got his father-in-law's diaries, his sister-in-law's diaries, his ma-in-law diaries, and his grandfather's uh, from his stay in Texas. So that's pretty cool, Pip. And Pip, mm. I also have to commend you. Pip went in and, and made comments or had commentary on a lot of the answers in the question of the week in G2G this week. So that's fun. Uh, Tommy Buck. Uh, nope, only letters, cards, and address books. That's just as good, Tommy. Um, there's some fun stuff down here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Roger Stone has a copy of published diaries of a distant cousin, which is really cool. Um, I'm looking for Helen Ford asks a question. She says, do we as a family historian keep and even publish such records for our descendants? Now she's talking about the diary of her mother, um, where her mother is talking about, um, uh, she's writing her, she's practicing her penmanship. Now her mother worked with people who had Parkinson's disease as a caregiver for a long time. And as she herself developed Parkinson's, um, Helen could see the development of it in this journal that she was keeping. Now, the question is, do you share that? Do you keep it? Of course you keep it. And yeah, I think you share that because it, it tells a very moving and heart-rending, heartwarming story about her descent into this illness, which ironically was so much a part of her life. Uh, going on. And, and Pip answers, yeah, what a treasure that would be. Uh, ben Molesworth, glad you're awake, man. I took a <laughs> tour group through the state archives and I told the guy leading the tour who one of my ancestors was. He immediately responded, oh, we have his work diary here. How cool is that to discover to discover your ancestor's diary or, or journal in a during a tour? Fun. <laughs> um, Let's see, moving on down, <clears throat> Kim Williams. Um, Kim Williams, oh, she has a diary that, that um, was written in the mid-1890s by uh, my grandfather's cousin, Flora Bristol. Uh, and she she talks about stuff, and, and she returned home and died a year later from gastralgia. 
whatever that might be. Well, I looked that, that up and it's any pain of the stomach. So if you died of a pain in the stomach, it could have been anything. Um, I see Janine Eiselman or Eiselman Goodson is answering. And I did not answer the question, but my second great uncle wrote a letter to my second great grandparents. It's a copy of a copy my mother had that I have uploaded to my great grandfather. That's cool, Janine. Um, moving on down. Let's see. Hillary Gatsby. My uncle has his uncle's diaries and I do have some family letters, but I don't think we had any other family that kept a diary. Uh, yes, Hillary's not here this morning. She's usually here yeah. with us. Nancy Woodward. Um, I inherited my paternal grandmother's five, five, five year diaries. The first entry start in January, 1925. She talks about school, family, friends, and seems very interested in a fellow she calls Burr. Uh, over the ensuing years, the entries continue and include her graduation from college, her marriage to Burr, the birth of her two sons, and many entries about her heart condition. On June 29, 1953, the handwriting changes to my grandfather's. He writes, Doris left us this morning for her home above. Then a little over two months later, he writes of my arrival, his grandchild, Nancy Woodward, and says, a very nice looking baby. Dear Dottie is doing fine. How mm. heart rending and warming and oh, that was just nice. The diaries are filled with information on birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, marriages, and of course, deaths. Nothing like a primary source, Nancy. Absolutely. Um Let's go on to page two. And um, there, one of the things that people posted were, and this is an example of a, a diary that had been transcribed here. Um, and then the other, the other one that I wanted to point out was this one here, Julia Brumfeld, um, which uh, is right here. Again, posted to uh, a website where you could put you know, the diaries, she's got the 1918, the 1919, and an image of each. But you know what? You can also do that on Wikitree. You can create a space page for somebody's uh, journal or diary. You can add information about the diary, why the diary was written or where the diary was written, you know, some sort of information about it, and then post the pages of those diaries or those that, that bit of information in there. Um, there's another diary journal, um, and this is the diary journal had been uploaded to a person's profile. Uh, again, you can create a free space profile page or just connect the diary page and, uh, you could do a little bit of a write up on it. Um, he just has family written down here, but no, no real description. There is a, uh, a little project where, um, Barry Smith was uh, the purpose of the genealogy research journals project is to keep WikiTree up to date with the latest research appearing in genealogical journals. So he he has uh, uh, an idea to go through and read through the journals and making interesting information and free space pages about the journals that he sees. So that that's an interesting thing if you're interested in that. Um, also. There's a really cool page uh, that Rick Pierpoint put together, Personal Diaries and Journals. And this is um, a group of uh, journals like the New England Diaries, Personal Recollections of uh, and Civil War Diary of Abbott Lemuel, Lemuel Abijah Abbott. See, I'm getting tongue-tied. Um, but there's all sorts of different little journals and things that are listed on this page. Uh, the Diary of Alexander Brody of Brody, Spalding Club, Aberdeen. So there's lots of journals here that are listed as well. And each one has its own free space page, as in this one, the Diary of William Hedges. So creating those free space pages and creating links to online text, you don't want to create a free space page and just transcribe the whole journal. That's not what you're looking for on WikiTree. We're looking for a description of it and then the information about it, and then links to where you can find the text. Um, if it's a family journal or a family work, you can post some of the pictures, but I wouldn't try and transcribe the whole thing uh, on Wikitree, just link off. So 
that is our question of the week. Uh, really fascinating. Lots of things that you can do on Wikitree with those ideas for journals and other things as well. Sarah? Well, I actually wanted to share um, my, because I, Benjamin made me think of it, but I was already kind of think of it. My great grandmother on my mom's side, she kept a five year diary that she would write in and actually have a copy of that. And I actually Ooh. scanned a couple pages and I just wanted to share that really quick with you guys. <clears throat> Oops, wrong one. Trying to find the red. I guess I'll just do the entire screen because I cannot find uh, the correct one. <laughs> the infinite. Okay, can you see that? It's my. We can. Yep. So it's one of the pages I scanned. It's from, I think it's from 19. It ends in 1963. So from 1959, I think, something like that. So that's pretty cool. I've been slowly scanning and transcribing. Do you journal? It, so. Do you journal huh? your diary? Do you? Sarah? Hmm? Do you journal your diary? Do you journal? Yeah, it's her five. It's a yeah. It's a five year. Um, no, do that, you personally? Oh, do I? No, yeah. I've tried many times, but I just can't keep up with it. <laughs> so, I I have I have a couple of journals that are uh, journals that I kept for a year at a time, several times in my life, which is I don't know anybody would want to go and read them, but yeah, they were more for my sanity than my for trying to keep up with things. I noticed Hillary came in. She says she's traveling today. She probably heard me talk. We she probably heard us talk about her. Your ears were burning, Hillary. Yeah. We I was like, Hillary's about. usually here. Yeah. <laughs> I have letters okay. and things that my grandparents exchanged during World War II. I also have a journal that my mother kept running up to her marriage to my father, which is a bit of an odd journal. Mm hmm you know, my mom just gave me a whole bunch of letters um, like that she had written to her family in Pennsylvania that her mom had written, her grit, her dad had written back and forth because they were living in Guatemala and they had family in Pennsylvania. So letters back and forth. Nice. So I need so to scan when, those. When she, when she came up to visit recently, she brought those up? Yeah, she gave, yeah, she just gave those all to me. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. She nice. was like, I know, I know you'll want to do something with these. <laughs> Uh-oh, JoJo, they're going to be live on Wikitree. She's going to be creating a free space profile for those. <laughs> but, but guess what? Because Wikitree is free and accessible, and the promise is that it's always going to be free and accessible, and like there's a way for that to go on perpetually, then your information, these letters that you've given Sarah that she's going to create these great free space pages about is going to be available for ever and ever and ever. Forever. It's for a long time. Yep. Until I guess until the internet dies, if that ever happens. Who knows now, what the future holds? But what will the internet look like in another fifty years? Or in ten years even. Yeah. Just how much has changed in ten years? Another ten years. You never know. Okay. So let's look. So we have some interesting profiles of the week this week. Um castle builders and i don't know about any of these people so it's going to be I we're all going to learn together <laughs> chris you know he, he's chris is making a whole bunch of pop culture references harry potter talking about skynet stop it no ultron either <laughs> okay so our main featured connection is Richard, <clears throat> King Richard of England. Apparently he, so all of these are this week are castle builders and we did this because on September 8th, it was his birthday. He was born in 1157 in England. And he built 
This is all the castles they built here. The Chateau Galliard. I probably said that. It's probably going to be a really bad day for me pronouncing things. So, just, and we, Thomas, we love you, me. and we we don't care. Because. I know. <laughs> so apparently, he's Richard spent his youth in France, training as a soldier, and lady later fought his father Henry the Second. He was captured. He kept during the crusade. He captured Cyprus. <clears throat> On the way home, he was taken prisoner in Austria and held a ransom. How exciting. So this is our main our main guy, Richard I, the Lionheart, who died in France in 1199. I don't know what the proper way is. It 1199, 1199, to say those years. Yeah, I think 1199. I think that works well. I think that works well. Okay. Our next one is Gilbert de Clare, who built... Oh, I forgot Care. to look. Huh? Were, uh, wait a second. You're 26 degrees from Richard I on your father's side. Ooh. Ooh. Is that my closest one or, or just... No, I'm just telling you that okay. that's what, where you are. Okay, so Gilbert de Clare built the Carefilly Herf Castle. <laughs> he was the seventh Earl of Gloucester and the sixth Earl of Hert Hertford, born in 1243 in England. <clears throat> he is a Magna Carta descendant of one of the barons, John de Lacey. I want to see. I want to. I want us to go look at all the castles. So, which castle is this one? Carefilly Castle. We're gonna look at it because I feel it's appropriate, right? To look at the castle that they built too. <laughs> While you're doing that, Elizabeth Hardwick is your closest at 19, along with Ben Molesworth, who is 17 from her, 18 from Louis the 16th, and 19th from Ludwig. And Robert Dunsmuru. <laughs> <Cool. laughs> okay, so this is the Carefilly Castle. That's really pretty. I guess let's look at the one that Richard built. Chatu. Lynette says she's five millionth in line for the throne. Oh, so close. Yeah. <laughs> Can we borrow some money, Lynette? <laughs> just just so give some this way. So I guess this is what it did look like. And then this is what it currently looks like. I'm assuming. Okay. On to the next castle. Gustav Vasa. I guess he did two. The Vad Stena and the Uppsala castles. Born in 1496, and where's that Sverge? Sweden? I don't know. Yeah, it is Sweden. Look, I guess correctly. Good job, me. <laughs> so he built the. So he was the king of Sweden from 1521 to 1560. And yeah, so let's look at, he was married three times, three different wives. First time in 1531, second time in 1536, third time in 1552. And let's look at his castle, the Vadstina in Sweden. I like all these castles. I need one of them to build me a castle. I think that's fair. Next we have Edward Longshanks, who built the Car Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Max. The 
the care, what, what's happened here? The care Narvon castle. I tried. Carnivon. Carnivon. I think. So Ed, this was Edward the first. He was king from 1272 to 1307. Look, one of the little things is about his mistress. He was to Eleanor of Castile, daughter of Fernandez III. Oh, look at that big chart. I guess of all of the, the Dukes of Norfolk. Wow. No, oh, that, that wasn't the only thing that's there. So let's look at this can this castle that I can't pronounce. There's your pronunciation from John Diner. Carnarvon. Okay. Or Karenarvon. What? Oh, Karenarvon. Thank you. And here it is, the Karenarvon Castle. You're just there's a guy there's a po there's a post from a guy named or a person named or maybe it's genealogic but Simru is that is that is that who is that who who are you who's genial Sim Simru is that Debbie I don't know no it's not no I don't know tell us who you are tell us who you are. Keep going. Benjamin just asked who built Care Parvel. Is that one of our Care no, it's not one of our things? I don't see it. I guess we can list. look it up after we look at all of these. And Hillary is saying no, it's Carnarvon instead of Carnarvon. Carnarvon. Which is what Carnarvon. I call it. Oh. Carnarvon. And Thomas Caroline is correcting me saying it's Kimru. <laughs> cool. I feel like we've talked about. Oh, hi. My name is Dai. Hi, Dai. Nice to Did have you. Did I pronounce you. that correctly? Nice to have you here to help us with our best yes. pronunciation <laughs> of your name. Nice to nice to meet you. Okay, so the next one we were doing was. Robert Dunsmer, who Craig, built the Craig de Rock. I think that one. Yay. <laughs> Born in 1825 in Scotland. Oh, there it is. Died in Canada oh. in 1889. He was a Scottish Canadian coal miner developer, owner and operator, and railway developer, and a member of the British Columbia Legislature. And then this is the, this is the castle. Craig de Rock. It looks more like a mansion than a castle to me. But it looks really pretty. Looks like it'd be haunted. <laughs> look, Are there any ghosts in the one? Anybody look, look at that. Look, house? that looks like a haunted <laughs> stairway. That's just me, though. Okay. <laughs> okay, next we have Bess of Hardwick. Yo mama says, Sarah, that's who we are connected to through Cleaver. Whoever that is. Oh. Kumri. Thank Kumri. you, Hillary. So we have Elizabeth Hardwick. Bess of Hardwick, Countess of Shrewsbury, born in 1527 in England. Uh, apparently they're working on her trail for the Magna Carta currently. And she did the, um, oh, oh no, the Hardwick, the Hardwick Hall. Ooh. Oh my. Also probably haunted. Uh -huh. Look at that haunted hallway with all those picture frames. And the tapestry. I know. Right? Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I like how we were looking at like traditional castles and then where these are more Manor. not modern, but you know, Manor time houses. changed. Tudor. I think they're Tudor um Yeah, let's say it said Elizabeth um 
in the Elizabethan Aaron era. Yeah. Leading example of the Elizabeth. Wow, that's a hard word. Prodigy house. I'm trying to put those together. Okay, so next we have Ludwig II. Oh my goodness, Nusch, Nuschwanstein. Stein, Nuschwanstein. Nuschwanstein. Close enough. All right, I think I did better on that one than some of the other ones. So Ludwig II, born in 1845 in Bavaria, Kingdom of Bavaria. And he was the King of Bavaria from 1864 to 1886. Now and, you have to put that that castle up, though. Yes, you have to see that because that is an impressive castle. Yes, he apparently he commissioned the construction of two lavish place palaces and this castle, and he was a devoted patron of the composer Richard Richard Wagner. So let's Bog, look at this castle. Wagner. Wagner, I should know that. Bogner. Look at look at this. I want to go see that. This yeah, is, that's, I'm adding that places is, to my, my bucket list now. That is that is like Dracula's castle. Like Yes. That is one of the most famous castles and the most photographed castles ever. That's really in between the trees and you have the mountain and the lake. Def okay, guess I'm going to Germany now. Go see this castle. Can you stay in this castle? I wonder if they... I know some. there are some castles that you can like rent out. And I know people who've done that for weddings. They rent a castle for a wedding or something. Yeah, cool. Next we have William Randolph Hearst. Hearst, who built the Hearst Castle. Born in San Francisco, California in 1863. He attended Harvard College, but was expelled. <laughs> So let's look at the Hearst Castle in California. It's temporarily closed, so we can't go visit it right now. This is the first one in the uh, United States. Mm -hmm, yeah, on the West Coast. All of them have been in Europe so far. That's pretty, though. Okay. Oh. I love I love this one, Versailles. Versailles. I know, I, know, I do know about this one. So built by Louis the the fourteenth, yes, fourteenth, yes, mm -hmm. yes. King of France from sixteen forty three to seventeen fifteen. I actually studied this painting when I was doing uh, art history. This guy. And let's look at Versailles. Not, no, I guess we need to Chateau Versailles. Because there's also a Versailles in Miami, <laughs> a museum. I'm going to try to. So pretty. And they have all these paintings on the ceiling and you have the garden beautiful john tyner's closest is louis okay so next we have wilhelm moritz Graf zu solms griffenstein who did the castle of brown brownfells Born in 1651 and died in 1724. What a wig. Very curly. Very curly wig. <laughs> like everybody's names are very long, so it looks like he, there are more siblings and children than there actually are. Okay, so let's look at this, this castle. Brown fills. Castle. Ooh. That one's a pretty one, too. Also in Germany. 
You guys have to plan your trip to Germany to make sure you see all these castles. <laughs> I think we have one more. William Burgess, the Cardiff Castle. That's another one I'm familiar with. Born in 1827 in England, died in 1881. He was an architect and decorator. Look at him as a jester. And so he did the Cardiff Castle. Have any, has anybody in the chat seen any of these castles in person? I'm assuming maybe Hillary some of you probably did. Like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Probably Hillary. Um, maybe somebody seen said one. they've been to Munich. Oh, John Tyner. Oh, yeah, probably John maybe has. Or probably seen some of the castles in Ireland, too. Lynette, Lynette, Lynette. Jester. <laughs> cool. So I think that was a look at all those castles. Those were fun. A little architecture. Even some architecture. Leah has been to Versailles in fifth grade. You went fifth grade to see Versailles? Hmm. That's, That's cool. pretty cool, Leah. Just looking at reading the chat really quick. Yeah. Um, they're talking really about hard. phonics again. <laughs> Ooh. Thai has been to the Cardiff Castle. <laughs> okay. Ashford Castle. I just want to go see you. <laughs> She's Lynette's not found a jester who was a jester. Maybe far enough back. Maybe. Maybe you never know. Okay. Let's go on past the Hearst Castle. Well, there's also one of the castles in California. I've, and I've been to California. I guess I didn't get to see that castle. There's a castle in my hometown called, what's it called? Now I can't think of the name of it. I've been in it. Well. Let's now, unless there's anything to add about castles, I think we'll go look at the photos. Oh, oh it looks actually going to be more architecture, probably. It's a home sweet home. We're going to look at some houses. And there better be a photo of an animal, guys. Well, I think the first one actually has a dog in it. Now I'm excited. Look at that. A dog, right? Oh. The very first one. Off to a strong, off to a strong start, guys. It's kind of blurry. That is a crazy log home mm -hmm. with a sod roof. Yeah. And all of those people lived in it. And it was one room. One, two, three, four, five, the dog, six, seven, eight. Man. Wow. In North Dakota. Oh, well, look, she's standing in front of her. Also, another wood house in Pennsylvania in 1932. Wow. Oh, look, this is a cute one. It kind of staged out. Look, there's a baby in a chair. And this little kid looks like he's in a kit. Looks like they're in a graduation cap. Or that's kind of what it looks like. Something on her head or his head. Oh, oh there's look, a there's a little cat. Look at that. There's a and cat. A, and a doll. Yeah, a cre creepy doll and a creepy. <laughs> I like that picture. It's a cool picture. In Illinois. Alexis uploaded this one. On Lake Michigan. Is there anybody in the window, Mags? I'm looking. No, not there. No, nobody in those windows. 
No, nope. the house is empty, I guess. I should, I should post the picture. Of the, I have a really great family picture of the family underneath this big window, and there's just this face pressed up in, against it, looking out at them taking a picture. Also, well, drawing of a house. That's cute. The green family home. Mm -hmm. Tennessee. Oh, Betsy, I love this one. Co family home in Taipei. Nice. Was it the just like the upstairs or was it the whole? Maybe this said something. Maybe the lower floor was a business. Yeah. I'm not sure. Enlighten us, Betsy. Oh, this one's in Ontario, Canada. Francis Pritchard. Former home of Francis Pritchard. It's a cute little house. So Betsy oh, says the whole house, my grandfather's medical clinic was on the ground floor and the family lived above Nancy Coe's. That's cool. Coe, sorry. Betsy. I'm on the front porch. The house is so big, he looks so small. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if maybe he's holding a cat or a dog. Or a dog. It could be. It looks like some there's a bicycle. I don't know. Or maybe a child. It looks like he's holding something. Or maybe just he definitely has a hat on. I can tell that much. No one was an Iva. Ooh, I think that's the same. Is that the same house? Yeah, it's the same house. Is it? No. It says it is. It says it is the same house from a different angle. Look. Oh wow. I guess from back then and now, or like no. more recent. Okay. Cool. Nice lawn. Mm-hmm. Look, a dog. Part of a dog. <laughs> yeah. He was like, nope, I'm not being in this picture, guys. Sorry. What are they wearing? It's like they're like a little, some kind of outfit uniform thing. They look real cute, though. They do. And California. Doesn't say anything. There's a fence in that picture, Thomas, or Ben. Ben says they don't do fences, but there's a white picket fence there around that one. On which one? This one or the one before? The one you're looking at right now has a picket fence. Oh, yeah, fence. right there. Mm -hmm. Can't see. Homestead in Dunn Church, Ontario. Mm-hmm. There's some people there. It's a blurry one. That is blurry. Oh, Robert Moore. Anyway, go ahead. We have this one, Fernbank in England. With a Looks, gravestone, right? Yeah, so I was about to say they have their own um, little cemetery yeah. next to the house. Betsy says that she got to live in a house for a summer in college, which was really in special for the house that uh, was her family. This is a cute photo, kind of showing moving from back then and then now. And it says across the pond, moving, I guess, over there and here. This is what I'm assuming. This looks like that same yep. house, yep. that little, the little, the little gazebo. Yeah. yeah, Lynette, I saw that Corvair. This is a cute one. She has her telescope in front of her house. 
Nice. Janine uploaded that one. Is that, is that you, Janine? Cabin of John Bode Sr. in Washington State. Nice. Inside the cabin. That is Janine in that photograph. Oh. <clears throat> Jack and Sarah Hamill with grandchildren in Oregon. Vanderbeek Homestead in New Jersey. <gasps> Look at this one. This one taken in Iowa. I have three horses in this picture. Here's a question in uh, from Charles Platt that says, I see there is no way to indicate no children on a profile, but I do not see a similar way to indicate no spouse. Correct? That is correct, Charles. We do not have a no spouse indicator. Yes, um, there is. You can no put a no. You can. Yeah. There's no. a way to say there was a no spouse. Nah. Really? Yeah. Really? I'm going to look. Yes, because you, if you when you go to add a marriage, there is you scroll down and you can click no spouse. I can show you guys. I'm going to do it. I'm, gonna, I'm looking to see right now. And here's the last one. Add spouse. You can remove spouse. No, I don't see anything that says no spouse. Because I've done that for some of my um, ancestors or family. Not, I, I already have a spouse, so maybe that's why it's not showing up on mine. Here, let's like go to... I don't, I don't know. I'd have to go. It's stream of it. consciousness, Charles. We love getting sidetracked. No worry. Yes. I love to go on tangents. So let's we, see. We Let me tangents. go find some random, like, I don't know. Do I, is this, was this one married? No. So, okay. So I'm going to show you on this one. So I, if you, you go to spouse. Can you pronounce the name for us first? Oreste Maria Cristoforo Giovanni Francesco Raimondo Giuseppe Antonio Gamalero. Wow. Okay. So you see here, okay. you can say unmarried. So if you gotcha. scroll down. Do you see that, Charles Platt? Go back up to the top there. So you can scroll all the way down or you can click that little link. It'll take you to the bottom. Unmarried. So yes, mm -hmm. there is. How about and basically, that? And basically, I'm not going to do that because I know I know he has a spouse. But um, basically, then it would take that little option to add a spouse away. How about that? There you go. That's, there you go, Charles Platt. I learned something today. That is so cool. All right. Sarah is um, my hero sometimes. She really is. Yeah, this is actually my um, great uncle. This guy. Great, great uncle, something like that. And that's why you can pronounce that name so well, too. Yes. That was beautiful. My mom that would have been very disappointed if I couldn't pronounce that. Beautiful. So. <laughs> Back to those photos now. We were looked at all of them already. Those yeah. are, I showed the last one. We can go back. So. Good. No, that's okay. Okay. Um, can I show something really quick? Yes. It's, it's kind of related, but not really related let me go back i just wanted to share this real quick um here we go and it doesn't really go along with but kind of goes along with um at mitoydna.org peter roberts wrote a blog about how we have uh royal ancestors dna uploaded to mitoy dna so you could go over to my if you have why in mitochondrial dna you could go over and compare yourself to royal people like the Tsar Nicholas and Richard III and other people by going down and clicking on the famous link. That's just slightly related to what we were doing today. So I just thought I'd share that. It's kind of cool. 
mitoydna.org blog. Bye. I just got the my male Italian cousin to trace my male Italian side. I got his Y DNA test done. So I sent in the mail. So hopefully if you I come back related to Chris Ferriello, how fun would that be? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you don't know. It could what where what part of Italy is your family from, Chris? I don't I don't mine is I have it sources say I they're from the north and from the south. Um I'd say they're from Rome, but also um Pagani from northern Italy. Salerno, something like that. You know, Charles, that's a good suggestion. If you want to to suggest that for an improvement, um go into G to G and write that out as a suggested improvement and tag it improvements so that the profile mm -hmm. improvement uh, team will see that and they'll know that, that somebody's requested that. And apparently it's John's birthday in um you gonna sing happy birthday to him? In 10 days, in 10 days. Oh yet. yeah. Well that's that's even past next Saturday. I'll I'll send you a blueberry pie pie John. So so somebody was asking me what part of, so in, in, so it says my grand, my great grandfather was born in Pagani, Salerno, Campania, but then his father was born in Alessandria, Piemonte, Italy, and then he died in Rome. So they were, it seemed like they were like kind of all over the place. <laughs> and he and Chris Ferriello answered, said his family's in the South. Mm -hmm. And also apparently he was in the Italian Royal Navy. My great, great grandfather. Great, great grandfather. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I don't found, thanks. It was Frank who uh, found all this stuff for me. Frank Santoro. Um, he did some good research on my Italian side. Nice. Mm-hmm. The wonders of Wiki Tree. The wonders okay. of Wiki Tree collaboration. It really is. It really is. It's wonderful. I love going through and finding where people have added sources and documentation or information to, to my profiles. I call them my profiles, but they're not really they're the profiles that I that I help by managing them. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to before we go, I just want to also briefly mention our Wiki Tree Challenge this week. We are working on David Allen Lambert, who's pretty well known in the genealogy community. Uh, so we're working on him. I was looking, doesn't seem like we have any bounty points yet, um, but I know they're working away. I see them chatting away in Discord. So if, and if but if you want to find out what we found, tune in on Wednesday to see the big reveal. So here's a, let's see, wait, that's not the one. This is a Thomas Colonel line. He says, I pulled up your tree and see the Piemonte. My uncle's family is all from Piemonte. Mm -hmm. How about that? Ooh. Also maybe, maybe, have you done the Y DNA test on that line, Thomas? I don't know, or D I don't know. I guess also if you've done a DNA test, we can see if we have any related. We already know we're cousins, but on the other side. But maybe we're cousins also on that side. Coming up on Friday as well is uh, Friday date night with Julie, four o'clock uh, Eastern Daylight Time, same bat channel, same bat time on uh, Friday. So you can come and hang out with Julie and we have coming up the Source of Dawn, the first weekend of October. Woohoo! Which Woo. is, if you aren't familiar with WikiTree's Athons, the Source of Thon is where we try and find all of the profiles that are on WikiTree that are not um, sourced. And we work on trying to find accurate sources for those profiles over the weekend. There's prizes a, and t shirts. Mm hmm. Get to watch Sarah and I talk a lot. 
and Aon and Julie and so many other people will be in the live cast mm -hmm. as well. We have lots of people who like to come on. Yeah, Les, she's our saving grace for the middle, middle of the, of the night. night. <laughs> yeah. But look, we had another praise for Frank right. helping somebody else with their Sicilian ancestors. One Tiger T. Who are you, Tiger T? Thomas, you can join more than one project. You can join all the projects. All the projects. I'll join all the projects. All the projects. <laughs> all the projects. Okay. So with that. What's that? With that. I was thinking if there's anything else I wanted to say. Um, we got Wednesday. Watch us next Wednesday to figure to see the reveal for David Allen Lambert. And right. we kick off our next um our next guest star and then next saturday same time same place same wiki and channel same wiki time i guess yeah that's it friday day night and i think that's all that has to be said thanks everyone for watching uh, we learned lots of new things today max learned something new i did i did i did <laughs> nobody somebody didn't somebody didn't I have a spouse? <laughs> and now we know how to do that on Wiki Tree. And we will see you next time. It was great. Don't forget to like, hit the like button, subscribe. And Sarah and I love hanging out with you people on Saturday. Yes, it's fun every Saturday morning.